Have you ever been frustrated because you needed to move DaVinci Resolve projects and its associated media between different workstations, like say your desktop and maybe your laptop? Or perhaps you've even had to send away a project to a remote editor? Well, I've had comments from students and people who I speak to that say that DaVinci Resolve doesn't give you a project file by default, and therefore it's not obvious how to achieve this, or what indeed is the most efficient way. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that we can actually do this inside DaVinci Resolve, and at the end, I'm gonna recommend my favorite so that you can try it the next time this issue comes around. Let's jump on in. So here I am in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. I've got a nice little edit going, but now it's time for me to move this project to a different computer because perhaps maybe a new editor is gonna pick up this on another machine or I'm gonna take it with me on the road and I need to start editing or keep editing, I should say. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we're gonna use the project manager and you can get to that a couple of different ways. There's the little house in the bottom corner. You can click him. You could also come up to the file menu, project manager, or the keyboard shortcut shift and number one. Click that. Whichever way you do it, you'll be faced with the project manager, which shows us all of our different projects in this particular project library. So I've got some projects here, and this is the one that I'm currently working on. And if I wanted to, I can simply right click and I can come to export this project and it will simply export a project to a destination that I choose on my hard drive, and it will save a DRP file, so a DaVinci Resolve project file. And this is very much like you know, other editing applications that you have a physical project file, and it's light enough that you could email it or sort of send it via WeTransfer or something like that, and another editor or perhaps you could pick it up on a different computer and open the project file. The problem with that though is it's not taking the media with it. It's simply the project file itself. So you would still need your media file on a separate hard drive or per who you're sending it to would have to have a copy of the media to be able to have that all make sense. And when they open it, it will also need to be relinked as well. And so you can sometimes get issues with that. One good thing I'd just like to point out in DaVinci Resolve 18.1 is how they've updated the project manager and it makes all projects sharing and, and copying and management of projects a little bit easier. For example, I can actually just select all of these projects at once, right click and export projects where you couldn't do that before. You had to go through and do it all one by one. Equally, if you look down here, we've got some nice buttons that make exporting and importing projects very easy indeed. And in fact, if we talk about the reverse, when we have that DRP file, what do we do with it? Well, we simply send that on to the person that we want to open the DRP, or we open it on a new laptop ourselves. and we come to the project manager, we're gonna either click on this import button, or we're gonna right click, import project, locate that DRP, and then it will just simply populate itself into the project manager there. So very easy indeed. Importing, exporting projects is the first way that we can move projects like this between computers. And just another little bonus tip to that actually, if we don't want to send just project files between each other, maybe the first time we send a project file to a new computer, we want to send the whole project. But then maybe after that, we don't need to send the project file anymore. It might just be that we want to send the new timeline that we've been working on. We can actually just do that. So let me just come out of here and show you how we do it. So outside of the project manager, back in the main project itself, let's say I want to find a particular timeline that I'm working on and I want to send it to someone so that they can start picking up this new version, for example, of the edit. Well, to do that, simply come to the timelines folder or wherever that is on your system for you, come to the timeline itself, right click, and then under timelines, you can have export or import. So in this case, we want to export a DRT, which is a DaVinci Resolve timeline file and then we would send them that file, which is again gonna be very light, and they can simply import the DRT on this side as well. So they're gonna import that DaVinci Resolve timeline file. Now again, that doesn't actually send them all of the media, but it will send them the entire timeline, all of the references to the media, and all of the cuts and the placement on the timeline itself. So they'll have the framework, but again, they will need that media to connect it all to uh, and make it make sense. Another cool thing that we can do is we can also send a bin as well. So if we want to just export a bin and all of the clips inside the bin and all of the in and out points and things that are marked on the clips in the bin, we can send all of that as well to a you know, new editor or to a new machine. So for example, in my master bin here, I've got these various bins that we've got with audio, timelines and video in. If I go to video and then right click on the video bin and I come down, you can see here export bin. And again, just click that, and I'll now be asked to save a DRB file, so it's DaVinci Resolve bin file. And simply once I've exported that, I can then import the bin in a very similar way, come up to master, right click, import bin, and then I will just simply load that DRB on my new computer, or indeed the editor at the other end will do the same. There is another way of doing that as well. If you come to file, you can also import bin 
or timeline, and you can export the timeline. Obviously the bin here is greyed out because I need to actually be on a bin before I'm able to export it. So export bin there. So another way you can get projects and timelines and bins out of DaVinci Resolve very quickly into a standard file that you can then email to someone or send on to someone or simply move via a hard drive or something to a new computer. So super easy, but the biggest problem of all of this is that it doesn't take the media. So for me, a more sophisticated way to handle all this is actually using a project archive. Let's have a look at how we do that. Okay, just taking a quick pause to make sure you're following this and it's all making sense. Make sure to leave any thoughts or questions that you have in the comments section and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Although if you do want a fast guaranteed response, then you might want to consider following me on Buy Me A Coffee. It's a way of supporting the channel and I do tend to prioritize any comments or questions that I have from my supporters and followers on there. So I would be much appreciated if you take a time, check it out and hopefully I can help you with any questions. Also, if you're enjoying this video, then do take a moment to hit the like button, as not only does it tell me that I'm making videos that you enjoy watching, but it definitely helps to ensure that people who are also interested in learning DaVinci Resolve can be shown the video as well. Remember, stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll tell you my preferred method of moving DaVinci Resolve projects between computers. With that said, let's jump back to the tutorial. So I'm in my project, I'm gonna go back to my project manager, and in the project manager, when it loads up, let's say this is the project that I want to send on and create a project archive for. I'm simply gonna right click, come down here to where it says export project archive, and I'm gonna click export project archive. It's gonna ask me where I'd like to save it. So in this case, I'm gonna save it on my desktop. And then it comes up with a little archive dialog box. Now, this is really cool because this is where you can get to choose what goes with the archive folder. So in this case, we're gonna send the media files. So that's the original media files are actually gonna get packaged up and created and sent into this DRA, which is a DaVinci Resolve archive, okay? And then we can also send proxy media if we have proxy media generated, and we can potentially send the render cache as well. Now, we may not want to send the render cache. We also may not want to send proxy media. Maybe it's just the project itself and the media files that are associated, or perhaps if maybe you are sending it on to someone where you just have maybe a slower system to work on or perhaps the editor itself doesn't need the full resolution, you can actually just tick the proxy media and turn off the main media files and then actually all you'll send them is the project and the proxy media that you've had generated. And remember in DaVinci Resolve 18, we now have a separate proxy generator application which enables us to really quickly generate lots of great proxy media for us to easily link back and forth between. You can then easily just send over this much lighter DaVinci Resolve archive file to your editor or to your new machine and start editing with this proxy media. You must have either the media files or the proxy media files ticked. You notice you can't choose to send one without the other. You have to have either media files or proxy media on. So one form of media does need to go with a DaVinci Resolve archive file. Otherwise, essentially, it's just a project file, right? So uh, that's the main sort of differentiator. So I'm just going to send the media files right now. I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to just create this archive file. It's going to copy the media files across so sometimes it can take a little bit of time, but generally not too bad. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to navigate to my desktop and I'm gonna bring you in a file where that is saved. So there we go, you can see that's the moving projects between computers, DRA, and then that is the one that I'm gonna bring into DaVinci Resolve. So what I do back in DaVinci Resolve on the new computer, or maybe this is the editor screen now, they're going to simply right click, restore project archive, and then from there, they're gonna find the one they want to Reinstate. Now notice here inside here, there's the media files that we obviously had it to copy and the project file. Now we're not gonna do anything with that project file because we just want to click on the main folder, the .dra folder, okay? Click open and then that will just tell us that we need to create an original name for this because obviously at this point I've got uh, the same name in a project already. So I'm just gonna keep it as copy, hit okay and it will just quickly import that project file. It will associate all of the media, make sure everything's relinked, and it does all of that for me. So now that's the easiest and neatest way to ensure not only have I moved the project to a different computer, but I've also made sure that all of the media that's associated has traveled with it, and it's one little library. And I suppose this is probably more akin to perhaps a project library that you might see in maybe Final Cut 10, because obviously you can choose to sort of house all the media in the library, and then you never sort of get left without it. So in this case, the project archive kind of fulfills that purpose. It's really very handy indeed. So another way that we can move projects between computers is by using the cloud. Hey guys, how's it going? And of course these features are new to DaVinci Resolve 18. So let's have a look at how that works. Let's come to the project manager again. And then from in the 
project manager, you can notice up here we've got some different tabs, local, network, and cloud. At the moment we're working on the local tab, which means that all of my project libraries and all of my projects are stored locally on my disk, which is all fine for most cases. But let's say we want to, as I say, take it away with us, or have access to it while we're on the road, or perhaps send it to somebody else to work with. Well, this is where these new cloud collaboration features come in. So I'm gonna click on the cloud tab. And when I do that, it will just close down and switch project libraries over to my cloud project libraries. And what you can see here is that we've got a new little uh, sidebar here that says Blackmagic Cloud. And then in that Blackmagic Cloud, I have a project library that I've set up. Now, each project library that you have will cost you a monthly fee. In the UK, it's six pounds excluding VAT per month. So it's not a great deal of money. And remember, you can house as many projects inside a project library as you'd like. So of course, you don't have to have lots and lots, possibly even just the one. And equally, there's no long term or minimum contract to this. It's just simply pay as you can, as long as you have that project library, you'll be charged. If you want to shut it down, you can, and then you won't be charged anymore after that. So it really is very flexible and, and very affordable as well, and a great way of being able to share projects back and forth very easily within the cloud, but also you can work on the same project at the same time with other collaborators as well. So again, if you're going out to a remote editor, this would be a really fantastic way of working between yourselves. And let me just show you how it works. So back to the local tab, and let's say this is the project that I want to be available in the cloud. So I'm gonna simply select it. I'm gonna come here to where it says copy to, and I'm gonna copy it to the cloud and into the project library that I've got available, and I'm gonna hit copy. So that's gonna move it between the local and the cloud, and you can see it still stays in the local side, but when I come to the cloud and come back over to that project library, you can see it's moved over here. And of course, it's ready to go. I can start working on that right away. And equally, my external collaborators could work on it as well. Of course, the big issue here with this is that they still also do need a copy of the media, but there are ways to handle that within cloud collaboration where we can actually use things like Google Drive or Dropbox, or even if you own a Blackmagic cloud store, and it's a very sophisticated way of essentially enabling you to share media back and forth with the people who need access to it. Uh, I think I'll cover it in a different video though, because otherwise it could draw this one out considerably. But again, this is a way that I now have access on the road to this particular project. And again, it's a way of moving off your computer and having access to it outside of the main DaVinci Resolve infrastructure. So there you go. As you can see, there are lots of ways that you can move your projects in and out of DaVinci Resolve 18 and work on different computers or even collaborate with your team. But what was your favorite method? Let me know down in the comments section. It'd be great to start getting some conversations going. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to smash the like button before you go, and also please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you'd like to know more about how you can support the channel, and so I can keep bringing you free videos all about DaVinci Resolve, please take a look in the description, or even perhaps consider picking up my online course, which is called The Beginner's Guide to DaVinci Resolve. It's available and ready now, and you can get 40% off using the discount code DVR40 off at checkout. Okay, otherwise have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.